So, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. Um, welcome to this recording. This is the first of a series of videos that I will be recording um, today, which is um, based on a recent uh, workshop we held in France in Grenoble. So, my name is Anton Duplessis and I will immediately start screen sharing to explain the context of this video. So, as I said, we recently held a Dragonfly workshop in Grenoble in France, uh, held at the CNRS. Um, so we promised to share on YouTube this recording, but we decided to improve a little bit on that. Instead of putting a nine hour video on YouTube, which none of you are interested in watching for, for that um, length of time, we decided to um, streamline it and, and simplify it a little bit and break it into smaller video sections. We also had some sound problems, so I'm hoping these recordings have much better sound and can be more useful for you. So the idea is that each small video um, in the series will have on YouTube a, a clear description what is included. So it could be useful for new users as well as for more advanced users so that you can skip over the things that you already know. So Dragonfly is a very powerful and very large software. So I'm hoping even advanced users will find something useful here. Um, but the focus is uh, really to explain to new users how to do something with Dragonfly and to do something useful. So having specific examples. So these are all our connections or, or contacts on Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, on YouTube. We already have a lot of content on there to help you with um, learning the software. We will continue to add to that. And especially if you have particular data sets that you are willing to share for demos for, of particular workflows, we are very happy to do that, to um, create such videos. So see also more on our website at theobjects.com. So ORS as a company um, is the company behind the Dragonfly software, which I will tell you more about in a minute. Um, as this is an introductory video, maybe not everybody knows the software yet. Um, ORS is um, since about one and a half years owned by the Comet Group, which is a global technology company. And um, the, that's the logo on the bottom left there. And on the uh, middle bottom is the CNRS logo, who are very, um, we are thankful for having them host us uh, for this workshop physically three weeks ago. So at the workshop, the main speaker was Nicolas Pichet, who is the vice president of R&D at ORS. He is the, one of the main developers of the software for the last 18 years. So, um, Instead of um, him redoing all these videos, um, I've taken over here and I will be taking his training exactly using the same data sets as far as possible and trying to uh, reproduce and demonstrate everything that he did in the workshop. And um, so I'm an application scientist there uh, for the last six months and um, th those are my contacts there. So let's tell you more about the Dragonfly software. It's a image analysis uh, software package, which is meant for um, visualization of any, sorry, let me just go back there, any images from, um, especially from um, microscopy and tomography tools. So meant for measurement and inspection and uh, 2D and 3D, even 4D actually. So time series data. Um, image processing and segmentation tools are quite strong. The strongest part of the software is deep learning tools for segmentation, for separating different parts of images um, using very limited data. You can train a computer, uh, a deep learning model to identify particular areas. And there's many advantages to this, um, which I won't go into details here. The aim of these videos today <clears throat> are to give an overview and to provide how-to tools to show you how to do things, not to really explain the context of why do, to do it. So the software is made for quantitative analysis and also for animations and for reporting and for un, uh, demonstrating what is in your data. <clears throat> it's a, a, a software package which is free for non-commercial use. So this is particularly interesting for academics 
and for this reason um, it has a very wide usage in um, universities across the world. So I added a slide here on sales just to um, give the contact if you're interested to um, purchase a commercial license. Um, the, just to explain also that the non-commercial license, the academic license is not a student version or a limited version in any way. It's a full version of the software um, in the same exactly as the commercial license. It's simply free for academics. The reason, reasoning behind that is that um, the software was developed by academics and we support research. We are researchers ourselves and we also um, would like to collaborate with researchers and we can even include your code and your workflows into the software. So um, if you're interested in that, um, please just be aware we are very open to such possibilities. We do incorporate other people's code into the software. And if you are using it for commercial purposes, not for only for your research of your students and yourself, it's also um, the commercial license can be either annual or a perpetual license, which just once off and continues forever. You never need to pay anything to keep that version going. We also do sell maintenance and support plans. So if you're an academic and you need priority support, you can pay $2,500 per year and we will prioritize supporting you. We also offer training and that's either online or on site. We also do image services. So if you're interested in getting a solution and you don't have the time or the skills to, to get that, um, to do it yourself, we can do that for you as we have a team of experts um, who use the software daily. Um, we also have a Viz server product, which you can look into. Um, the, it's a, a tool to, ac to access the software remotely from many places using many users. Um, how you may, making use of your infrastructure, your, your large computing resources, especially for larger institutions. So that's the overview of the software and sales. Please get in touch with Bill if you're interested in, in purchasing something. Um, the, let's give an overview of this training. So firstly, I will get started with the basics, how to load data, the workspace of the Dragonfly, um, uh, where the tools are, the basic functions, the 2D, 3D viewing, shortcuts, and so on. Um, I will then immediately start with something which is not so simple, but quite easy in Dragonfly compared to other softwares is correlative imaging. So showing how overlapped images um, can be optimized and viewed at the same time. And uh, so also some basic functions, still annotations, rulers, visualizations, and so on. I will then jump into porosity analysis as an example to demonstrate some segmentation tools and also objects analysis. So to get a, for example, a pore size distribution from an object. Then I will jump to fiber analysis, which is um, a nice way to demonstrate when objects are touching, how to separate touching objects like um, touching fibers using the watershed uh, tools. Also some objects analysis there and also histographic segmentation will be demonstrated, which is something using, which can be quite useful in some cases, a, a special way of, of uh, making um, correlated or, or, or multiple histograms, uh, viewing them and segmenting using multiple histograms at the same time. Then I will discuss meshes a little bit, aligning meshes and doing deviation analysis between meshes, also called CAD to part to CAD analysis. Then we'll move to vector fields, which is a way of visualizing the directionality of a sample. And then we'll move to deep learning. So the first very simple deep learning tool is noise to void, which is a denoising tool, which is quite nice. And I will demonstrate that on some noisy data. Then we'll move to machine learning segmentation, the most basic machine learning tools using sparse data, which means giving it only very limited labeling of data. Then we'll move to the segmentation wizard, which is making um, deep learning simple um, and testing multiple models on your data to see what works the best. Then we'll go to the classical deep learning tool, both for segmentation and for regression. So that means working on segmenting data as well as for uh, image processing or denoising. 
Then finally, we'll show some video maker how to make nice videos of your segmentations. So let's just cover some basics. Uh, the Dragonfly software is quite uh, well developed and quite a, a big package. And we have some particular um, terminologies, which might not be familiar if you're coming from a different software background or not a CT or image processing background. So images, ROIs or region of interest and multi ROIs, multi, multi regions of interest, as I will explain later. These, um, I won't explain what they are right now, just to say these are structured grids. We call these things structured grid because they are represented by a grid in 3D space. These are different than meshes. Um, meshes are, are not part of a structured grid. They are triangular elements in 3D space representing a surface, for example. Contrasting is in the software called Windows Leveling. This is historically due to, um, this is the term used in medical imaging. The software was initially developed for medical imaging, which it, it's um, not anymore. It's now for industrial and scientific image processing. So um, the Windows Leveling tools are still called that, even though it's, some, uh, it's actually a contrasting method. Meshes are triangular surface representations, as I said. Um, um, and actually, it's important to realize that meshes and images are totally separated. They are not following each other, as in some other software packages. Um, they can follow each other. You have a very wide freedom in the software. So if you move or translate some image um, data, you can then tell the, the associated mesh to do the same by right clicking and telling it to do the same transformation as the image. Um, We'll get to that later. I just want to discuss some basics. There's some very basic shortcuts which are very useful. On your mouse, left and right mouse button, depressed at the same time and dragging pans or moves your object or your image in any of the 2D and 3D windows. This is very useful and you'll get used to that very fast. Zooming involves pressing down the mouse wheel and dragging forward and backward. There are also other ways of doing these things. These are the mouse shortcuts. So um, this also works in 2D and 3D windows. So there's also a contrast shortcut, which involves pushing, uh, holding down the control button and using the right mouse wheel, or the right mouse button and dragging. Sorry, that's wrong, not the wheel. But there are other ways also to do that. So let's get started and let's uh, also please get in touch if you watch this and you have specific questions or if you would like to have some specific demos, um, we will continue to make how-to videos, um, preferably quite short ones to help you to um, uh, ease your workflows and understand as the software develops, it's continuously adding more functionality and buttons might move slightly. Um, so potentially over time, you would need to watch newer videos to see what the latest functions are. So we'd like to keep that up to date and please send us data and specific questions to demo. So that's it. These are our email addresses if you want to get in touch. And of course, you can check everything out on our YouTube channel and our website. Right.